Hello, I am Saikal De, a second year PhD student at uh, Peace Lab in Arizona State University. Today, I will present my ongoing research on hybrid phase duty controlled loss optimization uh, of a triple active bridge converter. Such a DC-DC converter can be used in multiple energy management systems such as space power supplies, onboard EV chargers, etc. This work is done in collaboration with Coolcard Electronics and the work is partially funded by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. Recently, the demand for versatile energy management system, uh, which is capable of capturing and delivering energy uh, to other energy source or sinks connected to the same architecture, is constantly increasing uh, in order to enhance the modularity and configurability of the electrical network, such as in distributed renewable energy systems or um, in subsystems like um, onboard chargers or, my, or more electric vehicles. So these are all efficiency critical applications and uh, maintaining a low loss at wide gain and load range is very much important. The conventional phase modulated triple active bridge converter uh, deals with a uh, few challenges and problems. Uh, mostly the approaches and research is uh, based on the fundamental harmonic approximation of the um, bridge voltages, uh, which lacks from the current analysis and voltage and estimation, uh, accurate voltage estimations. The phase modulated control of uh, power flow uh, lacks from the optimization of uh, loss and also it operates at singular operating point if I don't include any duty cycle variable in the system. So there is no scope for power loss optimization. The possible solution that we have discussed about in this paper uh, incorporates the bridge voltage and due to cycle control as well as uh, the phase um, control. Uh, we have approached the modeling uh, from a generalized harmonic approximation uh, point of view, uh, which uh, simplifies the quantification of the circuit to currents and voltages and uh, with accuracy. Also, we have approached uh, the problem to a problem with a multivariable optimization framework uh, to minimize the conduction loss in the system. The generic architecture of a triple active bridge converter is shown in this slide, where we can see three active bridges, one, two, three, or named as port one, port two, and port three, are coupled together by a multi-winding transformer. The leakage inductances L1, L2, and L3 can be separately placed or can be integrated with the transformer. The bridge voltages V1, V2, and V3 are also shown. The phase shifts between the ports and the duty cycle of each of the ports are the major control variables in order to control the power transfer in between the ports. The duty cycle variables are delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, and the phase shifts are phi 2 and phi 3, and the phase shifts are measured from port 1. The triple active bridge uh, can be modeled in a Y equivalent and then a delta equivalent circuit architecture. We model the TPTIB converter in a delta equivalent circuit architecture uh, in order to compute the current and the power transfer in between the ports. The equivalent um, leakage in inductances, line inductances L12, L13, and L23, those are placed in between the ports, are computed here and presented. For the ease of circuit analysis, we model each of the ports as a combination, as a series combination of sinusoidal voltage sources, and that can be done by um, the Fourier expansion of the quasi-square wave voltage shapes, uh, which give rises to the series combination of sinusoidal voltage sources, and that is also presented in the slide. The winding currents of the three winding transformer uh, can be calculated. Uh, using this formula presented here uh, and also it can be computed as um, a summation of uh, a k sine k omega t plus b k sine b k cos k omega t. Um, the computation of the winding RMS currents is essential in order to correlate the winding currents with the total conduction loss in a TAV converter. Uh, the Winding 1, winding 2, and winding 3 RMS currents are calculated um, and presented uh, in this slide. 
In a TAB converter, uh, the power transfer in between the ports uh, can be computed as um, uh, follows, and it depends on the phase difference uh, between the ports, uh, the duty cycle of the voltage of the particular ports, and the leakage inductance that is connected in between the two ports. The total power that is synced at uh, port 2 and port 3 or sourced uh, can be computed as the total power that is the flowing into the ports from the rest of the ports and thus the uh, port 2 power and port 3 power is computed. The generalized conduction loss optimization problem in a TAB converter is formulated uh, in our work uh, where the objective function is formulated as the sum of uh, total RMS sum RMS winding current squares uh, which essentially correlates to the total conduction loss and uh, the two major power flow constraints are set by the power that is transferred to the port 2 and the power that is transferred to the port 3 and we compute them uh, as the total synced powers at both the ports. Thus the objective uh, function can be minimized while maintaining these two constraints and this will lead to the optimal phase duty control variable sets uh, those will give us the optimized loss at a certain operating point set by the output port gains and the total load range. The applicability of the different phase shift modulation strategies in a TAB converter uh, is shown here um, uh, while changing the gain at port 3. Uh, we are keeping the port 2 gain at unity and the port 2 power at 174 watt. The port 3 gain is varied uh, from 0.7 to 1.3 while keeping the load as 50 watt. As we can see, uh, at 0.8 gain of port 3, the DPS modulation strategy or the only phase shift based modulation strategy is giving us very high conduction loss uh, correlated by the total uh, objective function value. Uh, while the higher order, higher order of modulation strategies uh, incorporated in the due to cycles at the, the different ports are giving us lesser conduction loss. Similar thing is happening when the port 3 gain is 1.2. Thus it is noteworthy that uh, while operating the TAB converter at a non-unity gain uh, operation, um, the total to supply the required power at the uh, output ports uh, we need to optimize the total conduction loss by incorporating the due to cycle variables in the system. In this work, we have searched uh, the sectors in between the load range, load and wide for wide load and gain range, uh, in which sector the application of which modulation strategy is beneficial in order to minimize the conduction loss and while uh, less burdening the controller by employing a higher order system for all the applications. In this plot, we see uh, the percentage reduction in computed objective function under the influence of the optimal PWM strategy uh, compared to the basic DPS modulation strategy. Uh, this uh, helps visualizing the benefit of employing the optimized uh, PWM modulation technique over the basic uh, phase shift based modulation or the DPS based control. The plot also shows that the basic DPS PWM strategy becomes the optimal technique for a broader um, gain and load range as the output power increases from the mid to the full load for a particular port 3 voltage gain. Also, as the port 3 gain drifts away from unity, involvement of one order higher PWM technique that is the TPS or the triple phase shift becomes necessary while maintaining high load at port 3. And in extreme case conditions, all the Port duty cycles should be incorporated in the control strategy. The experimental hardware setup uh, for the TAB converter is shown in this slide. Uh, as you can see, we have three active bridges bridge 1, bridge 2, and bridge 3. Bridge 1 and 2 are made of silicon carbide MOSFETs, and bridge 3 is uh, having uh, GAN devices as the switching device. This is the experimental setup uh, of my triple active bridge converter. Uh, in this table active bridge converter, we have, uh, as you can see, uh, three different active bridges. 
Uh, this, this is the first active bridge, this is the uh, second active bridge and the third active bridge. The first two bridges are identical in nature. Uh, by that I mean that we have connected the same silicon carbide uh, device as the switching device in both the both bridges. And the third output bridge uh, is having a high current at the output with a, with a, with a low, low output voltage of 22 volts. That's why you have connected 100 volts on uh, high current GAN devices as a switching device. And um, we'll be measuring uh, the bridge output voltages and currents through these two oscilloscopes. And uh, but this is the multi winding transformer, the, the three winding transformer, which is having a transistor of 7 is to 5 is to 1. Uh, and uh, the input uh, bridge voltage or the primary bridge is having a distilling voltage of nominal 160 volts, the secondary is having around 120, and the third is having 22 volts uh, nominal voltage. Uh, all the three voltages can be varied in a wide ratio of 0.8 to 1.2. In this experiment, we will be uh, controlling the the first bridge as input bridge and the second and third at the outputs. The second bridge is having a load of 175 um, watt at a gain of 0.8, and the third is having a load of 50 watts at a gain of 1.2. So this is the corner case. So we will be seeing first. We will be seeing the you know, converter performance at a, uh, when we implement the dual uh, triple phase shift modulation without having any duty cycle control in any bridge. Uh, as you can see, uh, in this waveform, uh, it's showing the primary bridge and the secondary bridge um, uh, voltage and currents. There is no duty cycle control in the bridge output voltages, and the currents are having RMS of 1.1 and 2.16 ampere. And this is showing the um, uh, voltage and current of the third output bridge. Uh, the, there is no duty cycle control in the third bridge as well, and the current is having a peaky nature uh, with, with a RMS current of 10.13 amps. Now we'll be seeing the um, performance of the same converter in the same operating condition with the implementation of the duty cycle control. With the implementation of the hybrid phase duty control uh, triple active bridge converter, uh, we'll see that how the RMS current can be optimized at different uh, ports. So now uh, we'll be operating this converter with the um, incorporating the duty cycle variables in uh, all the bridges, and uh, we'll check the output uh, current, how it's varying. So we'll go to 160 volts uh, input, and now it's running. Uh, so you can see this is the primary and secondary bridge. Uh, you can see the currents are moving to, from like 1.6 and 1.8 amp RMS. And as you can see in the tertiary bridge, in in the tertiary bridge, if you can stop this in the uh, so in the tertiary bridge, the RMS current is having a 5.2 amp uh, value. Uh, which was having what, around 10 amps value in the only phase control modulation. The major conclusions from this work can be drawn as uh, the utilization of the proposed uh, frequency domain uh, generalized harmonic abstraction technique simplifies the multiple mode based complex time domain based analysis. The duty cycle control along with the phase shift control optimizes the system conduction loss by providing higher degrees of control freedom for a wide gain and load range. The experimental results also verify the theoretical models of the RMS current calculations and the power flow regulations. Ultimately, the implementation of the proposed optimal phase duty control brings in substantial efficiency benefit for a wide unit voltage gain um, condition than uh, the conventional phase shift based modulation. Thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your interest in the ongoing research at Peace Lab. For more detailed information regarding our research, you can check out our publications at IEEE.